All right, let's get straight to this. Satellites are fake. Satellites don't exist. I know you guys are going to have a problem with it. I know you're going to grab your ergonomically designed keyboard, throw on your black gloves with leather patches with the tips cut off, put on a miniature gear on your index finger, and become a keyboard warrior. This is what you guys do. But I've been doing the research. You guys have been telling me that there is a Hubble Space Telescope taking pictures of stars. You've been telling me that astronauts are in the uh, International Space Station. This is what you guys have been saying. Don't tell me you haven't been telling me this. Let's go into this thing here now. <clears throat> now let's go into the layers of the atmosphere. Um, we have the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and the exosphere. Now the satellites are supposed to be in the thermosphere. Thermo is dealing with heat. Now, how hot are we talking? Okay, well, according to Wiki Answers, um, the temperature goes from 600 degrees Celsius to 2,000 degrees Celsius. I don't know if you know how hot that is, but that's as hot as a blast furnace. We're supposed to believe that they have these machines in the thermosphere where the degree, the temperature goes up to 2,000 degrees Celsius. This is what we're supposed to believe. Some people might have thought that the higher we go up in the atmosphere, the colder it gets. Well, that's not the truth. According to them, it gets hotter, as we can see here. This is the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and then we go all the way up here. It gets hotter and hotter. So someone has to explain to me how do you have satellites in the hottest layer of the atmosphere? I'll wait. Now I want to just draw something here. As you can see this is the ISS. It's from 330 somewhere around here to 435. The Hubble Space Telescope is around 559 kilometers up. The satellites, they say, are from hmm, 120 to 35,000 kilometers, you know, all the way up. Guys, this is absurd. The melting point for steel, um, aluminum, titanium, gold is around 2,000 degrees Celsius. So they would be melting. If you really think of it, the satellites will become balls of flame. It will become a comet. They're moving at 17,000 miles an hour. And you have supposedly 26,000 satellites in space. This is what they said. But yet and still, they're telling us that we have things looking like this. Look at this. Does this look hot to you? This is gold? And it, Come on, guys. This is ridiculous. Anywho, this is how satellites would actually look at the temperature that you're telling us the thermosphere is. They're telling us that thermosphere is from 600 degrees Celsius to 2,000 degrees Celsius. This is how it would look. This is how the Hubble telescope would look at 1,200 degrees Celsius. This is how it would look. This is how it would look from 500 to 1,000 degrees Celsius. Guys, this doesn't make any sense. This is a fantasy. Here you are telling me that you got satellites taking pictures. Just send me, please send me footage of a satellite. Now here we have a blast furnace. As you can see, a uh, blast furnace, uh, the temperature is from 2,000 to 23 hundred degrees Celsius. With a blast furnace you create iron from putting ore into it and then you blast it with air. This is how <laughs> this is how the satellites would look if they were really in space but they're not because they're fake. They don't exist. Have you ever seen what a satellite is supposed to look like? You have computer graphics to show you what they look like and satellites are supposed to be past low earth orbit look at how far GPS satellites are supposed to be 
There's even satellites in an orbital state in geosynchronous orbit that are very, very far away from the Earth. So not only are you looking at computer-generated images right now, you're looking at computer-generated images of the Earth. When satellites are supposed to be past low Earth orbit, wouldn't it be kind of cool to have a real picture of the Earth for these illustrations? Satellites are supposed to be past low Earth orbit, and by now, there should be thousands of pictures of Earth from space. Why would you ever substitute that for fucking computer-generated crap. Why are billions of people okay with these images and the lack of photos of Earth from space? Why can't we have a real picture of the Earth that is not supposed to be a composite? Why can't we have that? NASA gets billions of dollars. Is that really too much to ask? Now here's an image of the Earth <laughs> that people use all the time. It is not even supposed to be real. It's a composite and it's been shown how this is made. And there's several images from this composite model that are presented as images of the Earth from space. They're not even supposed to be real. They don't pretend that they are real, but they allow you to think they are real. People use this image a lot. Where are the pictures of Earth from space? You believe these satellites exist. Why can't you give me pictures of the Earth from space? They're fucking right there. They're old technology. They can't take a picture of the Earth? Your beloved satellites that you believe and you'll defend till the end of your life? You have no problem with no pictures of Earth from space existing? This image is important. That picture of Earth is from Apollo 17, and you're showing it your entire life, and they still show it in news articles today, and they're going to continue to show this image in the news for the following decades to come. <laughs> they're never going to stop showing you this image to represent Earth. They're not even talking about Apollo 17 in these articles. They use that image, the same image, which is in every single science book, the same image which you've been shown your entire life, they're going to continue to use it in news articles in the future. This is 2014. You're probably watching this in 2015, and you're still going to see this image all year long, and you're not going to think about it. It's from the 70s. It's like something you would see on a poster in that 70s show. Remember their clothing? How ridiculous they look in that show? That picture of Earth can be a, on a poster in their room because it's from Apollo 17. It is that old. Here's that composite again. I typed satellites. I didn't type bullshit composite image of the Earth. Why does that come up? They even search for that. We got all this computer generated bullshit. Are you okay with believing bullshit? Because I have a lot of family that are perfectly fine believing bullshit. They don't care that it's not true, they want to believe it. The cartoons your children watch today are so idiotic and they're designed that way on purpose. They want dumb sheep that can't figure out the world around them. Your children watch cartoons, they're entertained by cartoons, and you believe <laughs> that cartoons are real life. You believe that this shit exists. When NASA films their spacewalks, they're done underwater. There's even bubbles in the water. <laughs> and the Hubble Space Telescope, which is supposed to be supplying you with data about the Big Bang, the universe and galaxies and redshift that does not exist in orbit because they performed these same fake spacewalks on a model of the Hubble Space Telescope. It is all fraud. There is that composite again. Even if you thought that was a real image of Earth from space, why would it keep coming up? Why one image? You believe in bullshit. Are you okay with that? Do you want to learn about the world around you? 
all you have to do is start looking at evidence. Just be like a detective. Think critically. Turn off the television. It is controlled. Learn about Freemasons and learn about the Jesuit order. This shit is history. Now let's look at the contradiction because if you actually start to uh, watch this video, you're going to be interested. You're going to say, well, let me see if this guy's full of shit. You're going to jump on Wikipedia because that's the only source that you think is credible and this is what they're going to tell you. Now when it comes to the thermosphere, this is what they say. The highly diluted gas in this layer can reach 2500 degrees Celsius during the day. Even though the temperature is so high, one would not feel warm in the thermosphere because it is so near vacuum that there is not enough contact with the few atoms of gas to transfer heat. A normal thermometer would read significantly below zero degrees Celsius because the energy lost by thermal radiation would exceed the energy acquired from the atmospheric gas by direct contact. Now if that's not a crock of bullshit, I don't know what is. I got a bridge to sell you. You know, does this even make any sense? So you mean to tell me that this layer of the atmosphere is as hot as a blast furnace, but it's actually not hot. It's actually below zero degrees Celsius. This is what they're going to tell you. And now you're going to have to explain this to me. So before you come to me and tell me I'm crazy, before you come to me and tell me that I'm a troll and I'm looking for views, you're going to have to explain how the hell a layer of the atmosphere could be 2,500 degrees Celsius, but actually zero degrees Celsius. Because if that's the case, then we shouldn't feel the heat from the sun. Because according to them, the sun is far out in the space. It's far out in the vacuum. So you have to explain to me, how do we feel the heat from the sun? Someone has to explain this. I'll wait. I'll wait for someone to explain this. Because I know you guys are geniuses. You guys are intellectuals that's watching this video. You guys are smarter than I am, right? So you're going to have to explain to me how we feel in the heat from the sun... But here we have a layer of the atmosphere that's supposedly hot, but because it's in the vacuum, it's not hot. I'll wait for the explanation, because I know some of you guys are Einsteins, I know you guys are prodigies, you guys are nerds, right? You guys are so smart. So I'll wait for this explanation. Let's move forward. Now, we're going to look at these melting points, because this is really what kind of shoots down the theory of satellites in space. Now the melting point of titanium is 1668 degrees Celsius. The melting point for aluminum is 660 degrees Celsius. The melting point for gold is 1064 degrees Celsius. But we have satellites <laughs> made out of these three elements flying in space at 17,000 miles an hour where the layer that it's flying in is from 600 to 2500 degrees Celsius. <laughs> you guys have to explain this because I know you guys are going to have a problem with this video. You're going to call me names. I know it. But you have to explain to me how we have satellites in an atmosphere that's up to 2000 degrees Celsius. But all of the elements that it's made of can melt at a thousand degrees Celsius. And now here's a picture of the Hubble Space Telescope. This is in the friggin' thermosphere. And this is how it looks. You guys have no problem with this. And of course you have rocket propulsion. Now, I didn't even write any notes for this one because this one is so ridiculous. So you mean to tell me they're using rockets in space? But they said that in space is a vacuum. How are you pushing against nothing? It doesn't make any sense. All right, let me give you an example. Let's say you have a boat. Now with the boat, you have the oars or the propeller. The propeller or the oars are pushing against water. Let's say you take the boat outside of the water and you're still you know, pushing the propeller or spinning the propeller 
and you're still, you know, rowing the boat, you're not going to go anywhere. That's the same principle for rockets. In the Earth's atmosphere, you have an atmosphere to push against. So when you blast a rocket, you'll go forward. But when you're in space, according to them, they say it's a vacuum. So how the hell are we seeing satellites with this? <laughs> how are we seeing satellites with this bullshit? Someone has to explain what type of propulsion system you're using, but they're telling us it's satellites. Because this is the picture. This is a NASA photo. This doesn't make any sense. This proves even further that these satellites are fake. These satellites don't exist. And, and, and now they have, uh, what's this, uh, solar panels? So you mean to tell me that they are more environmentally conscious in space than they are on Earth? Are you serious? So they don't have solar panel cars, but they have solar panel satellites. It, it doesn't make any sense for them to all of a sudden be so conscious. But that's besides the point. But my main point is, this rocket propulsion in space is, is ludicrous. Now how many satellites are in orbit? You can't get a number. But that number will range from anywhere between 1,500 to 20,000 satellites. You'll always get a different number as to how many satellites exist in orbit. What do satellites look like? The old satellites from the 70s were very large. The Navy even recently had an operation where they pretended to shoot a satellite out of orbit to minimize its danger in re-entry and they described this satellite as being the size of a bus. Satellites used to be quite large. Nowadays, they want you to believe <laughs> that satellites can fit in the palm of your hand. Now they have CubeSat satellites and they can de <laughs> they can be deployed from the International Space Station by hand. An astronaut can toss one of these CubeSat satellites at the Earth. Doesn't even matter how he throws it at the Earth. You could throw it at the Earth or towards an orbital plane. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you toss it and it's tumbling uncontrollably. But this is what they'll have you believe. I'm telling you now, there are no satellites up in space. All the information is gathered from the ground. So there's no need to have uh, satellites floating around in space taking images because NASA just aren't putting them up there and then people always say hey, what about what about the river satellite images then how are they getting them it's quite simple they use ground based radar to take measurements of the weather and they put these predictions into a computer and it gives them these animations and that's all they're showing you in the weather forecast and then they put the as if you're looking down from above so they put the land, they superimpose the earth behind the radar data that's all it is none of the images you're showing are real photos from satellites up in space they're just, they're just images, predictions from radar and then they superimpose the information onto the background of the Earth so it looks as if you're looking down from above and that's all it is there are no satellites up there trust me to so explain this to me when you've got all this space junk apparently floating around the Earth how are they taking these images and not picking up all this stuff? And there's supposed to be 20,000 satellites floating around the uh, planet. I mean, look, this is what they reckon's up there. So how can all these satellites be taking images and never catching any of this stuff? 
with all this space junk in the way. The same with the Hubble. Okay, that's all it is. There's nothing up there. There are no satellites taking satellite images. Okay, it's just all ground-based radar systems, predictions and computer images. That's it.
Fibre optics are increasingly attractive for laying cables over huge distances, as in this underwater cable. Because a conventional coaxial cable becomes weakened or suffers attenuation, repeaters are needed every four or five kilometers to boost the signal. The lower attenuation of optical fibers allows for much longer lengths to be spliced together and buried at sea. Fiber optics that are less than a millimeter thick are bound together and protected by armored cladding. To prevent snags from shipping, the cable is then buried by this submersible sea plow. Over such lengths, fiber optics still need to use some repeaters, converting optical to electrical signals, boosting them and then converting them back to optical. But once the final connections are made, the optical fibers will carry many times the amount of information as the traditional coaxial fiber.